Do I absolutely write that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith? And you're absolutely right that that is not Christian come, faith. Uh, my, my Christian faith. This is a very graphic video of Commander Abu Sakar. He is in this video. He has just killed a Syrian um, military member. This is a rebel that is now cutting the chest open of that Syrian. He takes out his liver and his heart. And to show you what's going to happen to all of his enemies, the commander eats it. The dead soldier on the ground is the enemy of the guy we are now arming. An uncovered Muslim Brotherhood document publicized in a terrorism funding trial in 2008 calls for the destruction of the United States. Muslim Brotherhood presidential candidate Mohamed Morsi proclaimed before thousands of supporters that jihad is our path. Despite this, Barack Obama welcomed Mohamed Morsi with open arms when he was elected president of Egypt and continued to support him while non-stop reports surfaced that the Muslim Brotherhood had set up torture chambers for its political opponents and openly crucified Christians. With the Muslim Brotherhood taken out of power to the chagrin of our Muslim Brotherhood president, Barack Obama, the Egyptian military now in power has discovered a treasured trove of documents linking the Obama regime with the illegal activities of the Muslim Brotherhood. One such document is a list of Muslim Brotherhood officials receiving secret bribes in U.S. currency paid out by the U.S. consulate amounting to millions of dollars. Investigative journalist Jerome Corsi has obtained a copy of the document held by the Egyptian military proving the Obama regime sent millions of dollars in bribes to the Muslim Brotherhood. But who was managing all of this money? Did the Muslim Brotherhood walk around with hundreds of thousands of dollars in their pockets? Enter Malik Obama, Obama's half-brother. According to Egyptian television, as reported by Jerome Corsi, the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt wanted to, quote, inform the American people that their president's brother Obama is one of the architects of the major investments of the Muslim Brotherhood. We're not just talking about the bribes the Muslim Brotherhood received in Egypt, but the entire Muslim Brotherhood finances worldwide that more than likely includes an astounding $8 billion bribe to the Muslim Brotherhood made by the Obama regime, as reported by Egypt Daily News and Arabic News TV 14. The bribe was payment to guarantee that the huge tract of Egyptian land the Sinai Peninsula be turned over to the Muslim Brotherhood sister group, Hamas. According to Egypt Daily News, a document exists showing the $8 billion agreement with the Obama administration that was signed by former Muslim Brotherhood President Mohamed Morsi and his second-in-command, Karat al shatur both under arrest by the Egyptian military for murder and treason. Does this document really exist, showing the $8 billion bribe signed by Obama or one of his representatives? Undoubtedly. According to the Anatolia news agency, Saad al shatur the son of Karad al shatur said that his father, prior to being arrested, had in his hand evidence that would put President Obama in prison. And no doubt this is the document he was referring to. If the Egyptian military releases this document, it would no doubt spell the end of the Obama administration and mean a long prison term for treason for Barack Hussein Obama. Germans set up the Muslim Brotherhood in 28, and all the Islamic terrorist organizations can be traced back to the Muslim Brotherhood, and Germany controls 
for example, Al-Qaeda uh, and Hezbollah and Hamas. So the CIA have been controlled. The first three directors of the CIA were all German spies. Hillenkoiter, you go through Bettelsmith, and then into Alan Walsh Dulles, all working for Germany. And then you, then you can understand why the CIA have been uh, hugely ineffective at times. The same applies to MI6. It needs a lot more. There's a, it, this is a much bigger thing. What you focused on is, first of all, the, the perception of Ukrainians which were involved in the events in approximate in that area were Nazis. They were part of the Hitler operation in their lifetime. And these are children of the Nazis. The, we have to remember that the, uh, there was a certain section of working for Hitler, which were part of the Hitler system. They killed a lot of Ukrainians themselves, but they also killed a lot of Poles. The uh, assassinations of Poles under Hitler were done largely by these particular Ukrainians who were part of a Nazi system. If you look at their costumes that they wear at home, the costumes of those Nazi insignia, their origin is Nazi. And so what you have is you have the United States government now is actually supporting these Nazis. At Newland, is one of the key supporters of these Nazis. They are still Nazis. Their record of killing Poles during World War II is enormous. This is the same people, they wear the same costumes, the same insignia, the same le legacy. And by the way, you were in World War II. I, I should also add that. It's, it's amazing how, how long you've been uh, speaking out. It's an, uh, just amazing. Uh, and I know that is a part of the right-wing group being funded by the CIA. You are correct, sir. Uh, and they're trying to split between Catholic and then, of course, Orthodox. It's more pro-Russia. But what's the big geopolitical and uh, why is this such a serious situation? Because it has nothing to do with Syria as such, or things like that. These are byproducts of a much larger scheme of things. What we're on the verge of is World War III, thermonuclear World War III. And that's the big problem we have to try to defeat. Now, there are other problems that come in as subsidiary features of this problem. But as, as far as I'm concerned, as long as Obama remains president, we're in danger of being involved in a matter of you know, a few weeks or day, even days of thermonuclear war globally. That's where we are. And, uh, you know, my, my interest here on this is partly just inside the United States itself. This presidency is destroying our nation. And it's getting us into a thermonuclear war which we want no part of, and which our real military people want no part of either. There's no reason for a thermonuclear war. As a matter of fact, it will actually cause the extinction of the human species or something like that. said the Weather Underground Organization, which took credit for the bombing, is the same radical group which was responsible for the bombing of the U.S. Capitol in 1971 and the Pentagon in 1972. This headline from the 19, 1970 says it all. Four bombs at Murtaugh Home, notorious uh, terror group, the Weather Underground, claiming responsibility for an attack on the family of a New York state Supreme Court justice. The bombing was led by radical Bill Ayers, the same guy screen right, uh, who eventually formed a relationship of some sort with Democrat presidential nominee Barack Obama. While my parents, my brother, sister, and I were asleep in our house, uh, the Weather Underground uh, launched an attack on our family home, set off uh, at least three, possibly four bombs, one of them under the gas tank of the family car. Car bomb. Looking to kill us. The New York cell of the Weather Underground uh, that launched the attack on my family. Mm -hmm. uh, three weeks later, at Bill Ayer's direction, they were assembling bombs in Greenwich Village right. in order to attack uh, the officers' club at Fort Dix, New Jersey, whose organization uh, cost the lives mm -hmm. of at least three, if not more, police officers. Bill Ayer's wife, Bernadine Dorn, also one of the original leaders of the Weather Underground, uh, and the woman who took 
credit for the bombing at our home and in other New York targets. Bernadine Dorn uh, was a, uh, an attorney by training. She couldn't get admitted to bar because of her crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Ayers' uh, family got her a job at a large Chicago law firm, Sidley and Austin, in the 1980s. She was a contemporary at that law firm in the 80s with Michelle Obama. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people, and there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest. Uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. Now, I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious.